Brian, let's talk about long-term care insurance. Who is long-term care insurance best suited for? Well, long-term care insurance, because it can be expensive, isn't for everybody. Uh, sometimes you have the wherewithal to make the, the premium payments. Sometimes you have so much money that you don't really need it because you'll self-fund. And sometimes you don't have enough money to afford it anyway. And if you need long-term care someday, you're going to uh, go to Medicaid. And so there's a lot of it has to do with your financial picture and whether you even qualify for it physically. Because if you, if you don't, then you can't get it anyway. Now, Medicare, a lot of people think that Medicare will pay for long-term care, but indeed it does not. No, it only covers about 100 days of long-term care. And there is a, I saw a statistic that says about 70% of people will need some form of long-term care, whether it's short or long, but uh, one in five might need it for more than five years. So there's a 20% chance that you, you might need extended long-term care. So that's why I wanted to make sure we had this discussion here. Brian, a lot of people wait until they need long-term care to try to buy long-term care insurance. Is it advantageous to buy it when you're a lot younger? Yeah, you can't buy a long-term care insurance when you're sick. I mean, right. it's just the insurance company is not going to approve that one. So absolutely, it's better to buy it younger. There's basically two ways you can buy long-term care insurance. You can pay a monthly premium that will go up as you age. Now, the disadvantage of that, well, the advantage is it's cheap in the early years. Disadvantage is ex it's expensive when you're getting older, which is when you may need it. And so a lot of people go, gee, my long-term care, you know, I'm, I'm 80 years old. Now they want you know thousands of dollars a month <laughs> for, for long-term care. I can't afford that and live, but I may need the long-term care. So it puts them in a bind. There's uh, also asset-based long-term care, which is generally what I would recommend to people that want it. Uh, where you put in a chunk of money, if you can afford it, you put in a chunk of money and it provides long-term care uh, coverage for, for your lifetime. Uh, it doesn't have any future uh, costs associated with it, so they can't just raise the rates because you're not making monthly payments. So the downside to traditional long-term care insurance is that the premiums can go up and, you know, they get more expensive as each year passes by. Does it get to a point where most people just can't afford it? Yeah, it can be, and that's why I said the asset-based plans are, are, are can, can be really good for that. The other cool thing about asset-based plans is let's say you never use it. Often they're set up to return your premium. Let's say you put one or 200000 into it way back when, and you never use the long-term care or use very uh, little of the benefit. Uh, most of that uh, premium can go back with no interest to your heirs someday. So it's the kind of insurance that you can get back if you don't use it. I'd love to know that if I had car insurance, I didn't get in an accident, they, they give it back to me someday. They don't. So that, that, that can be a good thing with long-term care insurance. Brian, again, like me, I think a lot of people learn better with examples. Can you give me an example of uh, someone who, using long-term care insurance? Yeah. Uh, so, for instance, let's say somebody comes to me and they say, well, I hear in, in your state uh, long-term care might be 10000 a month or 12000 a month. Um, there's no way I'm going to be able to afford that. And, and maybe to buy long-term care insurance of that amount would be huge. That would be a, an enormous outlay of money to cover that. But I remind people that you don't have to cover that because in any financial plan, you know, we might look at your plan and say, well, you have a pension, you have an annuity, you have real estate uh, rental income, you have social security. And let's say in that case, uh, the person thought it was going to be 10000 a month and they uh, had 6000 a month coming in from these other sources. Well, to supplement that, all they need is the difference. Because I remind people, you're not going to be traveling and, and doing all these fun things if you're in extended, full-on nursing home care. And so if that's 10000 a month, you just need 4000 to supplement the six you have coming in. So maybe you buy a policy just to supplement that difference because you won't have your normal expenses anymore. The other thing I like to point out is that people don't generally go from feeling really healthy to next day I'm in a nursing home. There's usually a long transition period. So with that, make sure that you understand uh, at what points would your long-term care uh, kick in when you just need uh, you know, occasional help at home or, or as you age, maybe you need more and more care before you actually have to go to assisted living or eventually from that to a nursing home. Brian, thanks for telling us more about long-term care insurance.